Hey, g'day guys. The LS400 is getting a bit of a repair. And plans change. This one's changed quite massively because I was doing the repair in the car and uh, I'm now leaning against the engine. Hmm. Yes. Shit, that escalated a little bit. However, this way I'm going to sort a lot more problems and it's going to come out a whole lot nicer. And there's some extra things that I can fix that I wouldn't have been able to fix if I'd done the job in the car. I was actually really, really proud of myself. I managed to get to the, the bottom EGR pipe bolts, these ones. And I was hoping to get those ones in place, and then these ones, and these ones, and remove these EGR pipes. Remove the EGR. Blank off the water lines with these fellas. And so that was water lines, water lines, and blank that off with the Japanese one. So I'm quite fortunate over here. Uh, we don't see that many LS 400s with the EGR on, but I have seen enough that I'm getting short of these Celsius plates. Once upon a time, I actually had a pile of UZ manifolds when we were supercharging a lot of them and, and just individual throttle bodies, I got a heap of them. And I was also able to once upon a time buy engines, you guys are right like this, I would buy an engine to strip it. And if it had been sitting for a few years, I never fired them up, I just pulled them to part. And they were always absolutely mint inside. Back in those days, I never got a bad one. And the stock car boys would take the block, crank and oil pump. I'd leave, be left with cylinder heads, plastics, bolts. I cringe at what I used to do on them because I pulled a heap of these apart just for that purpose. Of course, the blocks did get going again in race cars and I was able to fix a lot of cars. But over the years, I've used up a heap of these covers and these engines are harder to find over here. Though I see in the rest of the world, you can still get quite a few. Right, so let's get this EGR off and get that plate sitting on there and we'll talk a little bit about the galleries of where the gases flow. So hose number one, I don't actually know if that's hose number one in the manual, but I'm gonna call it hose number one today, comes off the idle speed control. Come off there, come off. There we go. Now on the Japanese ones, these little rubber pieces, that's what is normally fitted there. You could put one of those on there to blank that off. I think I'm going to be changing the hoses on this one anyway, changing those hoses around and modifying the throttle body, so it probably won't get the front one. But we still have the back one. The back EGR hose is around here, and this back crossover is different to the Celsius because it's got the EGR going through it. I'm hoping that the bolts are the same. As you can see, the last person in here didn't bolt any of that on. That, that was extra. And the bolt for the fuel crossover, that wasn't bolted on. And this cover's broken, which is really cool. Hopefully, I've got something that I can fix it with. And again, this hose isn't going back on. So let's pop that little plastic one down here. Job done there. Another thing I will be doing is replacing the ventilation hose. This one happens to be just a piece of oh, fuel hose, I think. We'll probably put a new PCV valve in it as well, and we will definitely be doing that grommet. So this is over here to the throttle body. And again, that's, that hose has, has got a bit of a kink in it. It's not looking so good. Just so I don't break this VSV, I'm going to pop that out of the way. And it's not actually going, that one's not going back on anyway. That is for the 
uh, fuel pressure regulator. With that VSV out of the way, we can remove the EGR. I've uh, cheated a little bit on this job. The ECU on this car also had internal issues. So without, with the, there we go. Look at that, isn't that fantastic? Yeah. If you're removing this with the LS400 computer, some models do throw a fault code and there are some different EGR systems on them. Um, a UCF-10, I don't believe you're gonna have a problem. Don't quote me on that 100% because there are different versions. The 20s often do throw a fault code for EGR. You will find that you can put some resistors in it. This one, Celsius computer, I'm gonna modify the loom to match the Celsius and they don't have EGR. So I've, by default, eliminated any problems in the ECU with codes for the EGR. Let's get the rest of this valve off. <coughs> There's a bolt somewhere. And look at the crap in there. That is disgusting. Let's get these lines off the back as well. Someone was here before me and stripped it. Oh. Just on a note too, you'll see here, back crossover pipe, silicon hanging out of it. We'll see what those gaskets are like. Ideally, I'd love to put a normal non-EGR crossover pipe. I'm not sure I've got one, so I'm going to go look in my stockpile. Might even do that as well. And then we'll find out if the bolt holes for the wiring loom are the same. We know someone else has been here, because that one's in backwards. Um, there's something missing. There's a gasket here, but there's no gasket there. And you can see there, we've had a little bit of a leak. As with the exhaust, just here, there's been a leak as well. I knew I could hear one. Right here, you want to cover that up, put a, a, a plate over it. I'm going to use a factory Celsius one. So why do we have an EGR system? I'll do it in the briefest way that I can. Basically, as you make an engine more efficient, the combustion temperatures climb, and then the oxides of nitrogen increase. So. Um, nitrogen oxide and nitrogen dioxide. To overcome that problem, uh, they feed crap from the exhaust back into the inlet to make it less efficient. I don't know, maybe the engineers that thought of this were watching too many rabbits who eat their own shit. Because I don't think putting exhaust gas into an engine is very clever at all. Though with modern emission standards, lots of them have it. Um, especially, well, especially in those diesels, they've, and they're just a pain in the backside. So this one's coming off. So to feed the crap from the exhaust, exhaust gas has come through here. Here's my finger. Comes up through this pipe, through here, into here, where they attempt to cool it a little bit from um, lot, very hot to just hot, because of course there's 80 degree coolant running through here. Up through here, past the missing gasket, depositing crap through the intake manifold here to this port here. At this port here, it then enters into the valve. 
and then it allows it to go into the intake manifold here and there's a tube running through into the center of the plenum. The PCV valve goes from this point here, seeing we're doing emissions from this point here and into there, into the manifold. Let's take that throttle body off and uh, we'll show you that the port inside the uh, plenum. So here's the basic layout of the bits I've removed. They're not going back on. There's another cover going onto the exhaust. The EGR itself. Gasket. I happen to have a spare. I have a new one left over from another job. A new PCV valve to go in it. Ventilation hose. Other ventilation hose. Brackets going off. And then I hooked the wiring up. Seeing I kind of combine PCV valve and EGR valve, we might just talk about this little fella here. So that's the fuel tank breather, a VSV, vacuum switching valve for the fuel tank. It goes out, this uh, hose here, heads out to the charcoal canister. If I'm doing a conversion, I won't always run that. But in factory vehicles, I prefer to leave the emission system, that side of things, working as it should. EGR off, but I leave the tank breather in place and I leave the PCV valve in place. I removed the throttle body and there is an example of what EGR does to an engine. Let's give it a scrape. Look how thick that build-up is. I think I've got a cleaning job there. What's even better, let's look in the intake manifold. If you look in here, you will see two holes. One of them is for the PCV valve. Uh, that one. Uh, that one. I'll block that one off. The other one is the EGR. Let's put a screwdriver through it and see what happens. Right, watch that little hole. Here comes my screwdriver. Can we see the size of that hole now? That was just completely choked up with crap. That right there. Well, that's the top one, full of gunge. I'm not going to assemble up the EGR at this point. I want to clean all the crap out of that intake manifold. That's coming apart as part of this whole job. I, but I think that gives a pretty good overview of the EGR. If you want to see me watch do the wiring, I'm doing that in another video. So, on to the next job.